Hey guys! Alright, so this is where things get really fun. In this set of slides, we are going to look at circuits that have both series and parallel characteristics. So we have to be kind of picky, and I'll show you what I mean. So first you need to know that a combination circuit is a circuit that has both series and parallel components. Every time that we add a resistor, we have to be careful and determine how it affects the current. If we add a resistor in series, it makes the total resistance increase. If we add a resistor in parallel, it makes the total resistance decrease. So we are going to still simplify the circuit, but we have to simplify certain components before others. And that's going to make sense in a little bit. So just as a reminder, equivalent resistance is the total resistance present in the circuit. It's the total number of ohms that a resistor would have to have in order to replace all resistors in a circuit. In combination circuits, we will be using both of the following calculations. We will be using REQ equals 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus etc, etc, etc for series components, and we will use 1 over REQ equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, etc, etc. We will have to use both of these relationships paired with our V equals IR equation to fill in our tables. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of how to do that. Here's our first practice problem. So notice I've added a fourth resistor. What we have to do while looking at this practice problem is determine which resistors do I want to add first in order to solve for an REQ. So I have the battery, resistor 1, which is in series, resistors 2 and 3, which are in parallel, and then resistor 4, which is in series. Every single electron must travel through R1 and R4. They can choose if they want to travel through R2 or R3. So let's look at those numbers. So the first thing we have to do is decide what do we need to simplify first. And we want to always simplify our parallel circuits before anything else. So I'm going to write 1 over REQ equals 1 over 4 plus 1 over 12. That is equal to 0.25 plus 0 0.083, which equals 0.33. Now remember that's still the 1 over REQ. We have to inverse that. And our REQ for these two resistors is 3 ohms. So if we were to take these two resistors out and replace them with a new resistor, it would have the value of 3. So now I have to add R1, which is 5, R2 and 3 combined, which is 3, and R4, which is 8. 5 plus 3 plus 8 is a total of 16 ohms. Now I can calculate my total current using V equals IR. V from the battery is 24 volts. My resistance is 16. So 24 divided by 16 is 1.5 amps. Now I have to use the relationships from the previous videos. If all of my electrons travel through that resistor, my current must equal the total current. So resistor 1 and resistor 4, every single electron has to travel through, so I'm going to plug in a total current of 1.5 and 1.5. The currents must be the same. These two boxes should add up to 1.5. Before I can figure those out though, I need to help. Before I can figure these out, I need to know another variable for R2 and R3. So instead, let's solve for something that I can solve for. I can find V by taking the current and the resistance at R1 and multiplying them together. So 1.5 times 5 is 7.5 volts. I can do the same thing for R4. 1.5 times 8 is 12 volts. 
So I got 24 volts from the battery. I used 12 at resistor 4. I used 7.5 at resistor 1. So 12 plus 7.5 is 19.5. I've already used 19.5 volts of my energy. Since I started with 24 and I used 19.5, I have 4.5 volts left. So my electrons have to travel through R1, then they choose R2 or R3. Since the electrons only go through one, both of them must have a voltage drop of 4.5. When we add up the path that the electron travels, the total voltage has to equal the voltage from the battery. So if I have a green electron, through R1, R2, and R4, R1 is 7.5, R2 is 4.5. You add those up, you have 12, and then R4 is another 12, which adds up to 24. Or you could follow the yellow path, R1, R3, and then R4. Again, 7.5 plus 4.5 plus 12. Now I can go back and solve for the current, but I'm just going to make a guess here. Since my resistance for R2 is 4 and my resistance for R3 is 12, I think more of my current should be traveling through R2. More electrons are going to choose the easy path. So I'm going to take V, 4.5, and divide by 4. That's a value of 1.125. Now I'm going to take a value of 4.5 and divide it by 12, and that is a value of 0.375. These two numbers added up should equal our total current. Okay, so we've used both series and parallel relationships to solve for this. We combined our parallel resistors first to find an REQ. Then we added our three resistors in series to find our new total resistance. We solved for our current, which is our total current, as well as the current in the two series resistors. We solved for the voltage drop in those two resistors. We solved for the voltage that is left over that we still need to use. Plugged those in into our two parallel circuits then solve for the last two current values. So this is kind of overwhelming. We're going to do at least one more together in the video, and then we'll look in class and see if we need to talk some more. So practice problem number two. I've rearranged this circuit a little bit. So now I have two series resistors and then two parallel resistors. Again, I want to combine my parallel resistors first. So one over REQ, is equal to 1 over 6 plus 1 over 4. That is 0.1667 plus 0.25, which is a value of 0.41667. Now, since that is not just the REQ, that is 1 over REQ, we do have to take the inverse, and if we were to replace those two resistors, we would need a resistor with a value of 2.3. Now I need to do the regular REQ. 2 plus 3 plus 2.3 equals 7.3 ohms. So my equivalent resistance of that entire circuit is 7.3 ohms. Now I go back to V equals I times R. I have 24 volts from the battery. My REQ is 7.3. 24 divided by 7.3 is 3.29. Now I have a current of 3.29 having to travel through two of my resistors. Every electron must travel through R1 and must travel through R2. So I can plug 3.29 in at R1 and R2. Now I have two unknowns here so I can't solve for anything quite yet, but I can go back and solve for my voltages. So V equals I times R. 
3.29 times 2, which is 6.58. 3.29 times 3, which is 9.87. So 6.58 plus 9.87 is a value of 16.45. So I started out with 24 volts. I've used 16.45 volts. So I have 7.55 volts left. And since my electrons either travel through R3 or R4, they do not travel through both. I'm going to plug that value in for both voltages left in that table. And now R1, R2, and R3 should equal 24. R1, R2, and R4 should equal 24 because those are the two possible paths that our electrons can take. Now we have the voltage, we have the resistance, and using V equals IR again, 7.55 divided by 6 is 1.26. 7.55 divided by 4 is 1.89. And to double check, I'm going to add these up, and I get 3.15. So that's a rounding difference from that 3.29 because I did round some decimal places. Okay, so maybe this time went a little more smoothly. Maybe it was just as confusing. We're going to ask questions, and we're going to talk about this in class to make sure that we get it. So I'll see you in class so we can take a look at combination circuits. I can give you some reminders and some pointers as we practice. So I'll see you then.